Well, it's a big day for me. I'm here at Jeff's place picking up my load of pine, which he put through his kiln. We're going to talk more about that. My stuff is already on the trailer, but Jeff's got another pile of pine getting ready to go into the kiln here. So you're in the midst of sticker in this. That's correct. Right? And um, we were talking a little bit about spacing on the stickers, which is critical based on the moisture content of the material. Yeah, moisture content and the type of wood that you're dealing with. Uh... So closer on wetter wood, right. further on. Yeah, and the reason is is because uh, if you get too far with wetter wood, as it dries, it will actually lift up or go down and twist. In between the stickers. Right. So that sticker distance. Is you've got a uh, you've got a you... bin full of stickers over here, and these are all oak. Right. And that works with most stuff. We we're yeah, talking about, but it... sticker shock is a concern. Yeah. If you're if you're if you're dealing with a customer that wants a really uh, bright maple, and this is generally where you have to be really really careful, oak stickers will stain, uh, and they'll stain quite deep, up to an eighth of an inch mm -hmm. into the wood. Uh, so you want to use a different type of sticker. I have a bunch of pine stickers uh, available for just maple. I probably use them once a year maybe. Uh, but generally, um, most people bring in boards that are usually an inch and a quarter thick. Uh, you don't have to worry about that, but if you bring in one that's an inch... Because so much material is going to come off the face. Right, the you're, going to lose, you're going to lose some anyway. But if you bring in a thinner board, then you want to be concerned about that stain. And when you're talking uh, white maple, you're talking a board that's probably worth three, four dollars a board for me, versus fifty cents. Oh, now my <laughs> um, I got a lot of labor in that stuff. Um, and then the other thing that's a big deal is keeping the stickers in line again, just for that continuity of. Yeah, you want to make sure you can um, you have good weight distribution. Okay. Well, let's get this. We can get this one stickered, and then I'd like to talk about the kiln some more too, so we can learn some more there. Okay. Fine. So we're adding heat and, and then at the same time dehumidifying the just the ambient humidity out of the room, yeah. which and is pulling the moisture out. You can keep it as airtight yeah. as possible because you want to be able to remove the moisture at a nice set rate. Uh, dehumidification um, is probably one of the more desirable ways to uh, remove uh, moisture because you have less degrade in the wood. And degrade meaning defects that start. Defects, there. yeah. So, twisting. Um, uh, let's say cracking on the end, splitting. Uh, case that, hardening. Come out of that case hardening. Yep. Yeah, you want to be careful of that. You get very little stress if you do this properly. You um, or the wood? The wood. <laughs> the only time I have stress is when it breaks and I have to send away for parts. Now, so we, we had a load of pine in here. Um, can I mix a load of pine with a load of oak with a load of cherry yeah. with a load of walnut? No, no, no. So is it... Every species has a different drying schedule, or are there some species that you can't uh, mix you, you basically, in the drying business, you got three groupings. You've got pine and poplar that we dry together. And then you have cherry. I know this is going to this is going to be surprising. Cherry, maple, uh, and woods and alien soft maple. And you think of hard maple really being an extremely hard wood. It is a hard wood, but it gives up its moisture content about the same as uh, cherry. Hmm. And I'll give you an example. Pine, you can take out 15% of the gross uh, uh, moisture out of that wood per day. So if you had uh, perfectly green wood like you had, it takes about 21 days. Uh, oak, on the other hand, uh, is about 35 days. Because, because it gives it up more slowly. Yeah, and white oak is even a little tougher. Uh, white oak is probably 38 days. Because then we're talking a percent and a half a day versus 15. So if we threw it all in at once, the problem's going to be one wood's done, another's not, or, or one yeah, wood's overdone. Yeah, basically, yeah. Or... Yeah, and you can't even with this, this system. You can make wood pretty bad. What are you doing, raising the price on me here? Oh, <laughs> well, um, it's going to go higher now. <laughs> now that this shield that you have hanging in the back, this high-tech 6 mil poly. Um, Which is coming down today. <laughs> okay, it's going to look better in a second. But yeah, explain yeah, yeah. what it is we're trying to make happen with well, the air. It, envision a big load of lumber sitting right where I'm standing. Yeah, you want to make sure that you're forcing all that air to go through the wood rather than around it. Uh, it takes usually uh, 25 to an hour, to, depending upon what I have in here, to get it to work right. So the plastic will act like a gasket. Yeah, that that's the whole idea. The fans over the top, the fans are going to blow the air, push it underneath to return yeah. it to the side yeah. where the dehumidifier is. Yeah, so it, it, I mean, it's a pretty simple uh, apparatus. Now, you uh, came highly recommended to me, but not everybody has the luck of living in western Wisconsin like I do. So for folks that need to shop for a kiln in their area, what are the questions they should ask? How are they going to, how should they probe this to find somebody who knows what they're doing? 
Well, uh, the biggest thing is uh, if the guy's been around uh, a while and he understands the difference in woods, but the, it depends on the, uh, the quality you want. It, if you're working with a dehumidifier, which I, I, I did a lot of research on this before I spent the money, a dehumidification system does take longer, but it gives you a better quality product. And it's patience, too. Uh, there aren't many of us left. I think at one time there was probably three or four guys around here doing it. Now I think I'm one of the two. So it sounds like recommendations from other people who have used the kiln is yeah, a great way I would, to go. So you know, if the guys word know, of mouth. Yeah. Well, thanks, Jeff. It's been yeah. great and educational. Education. And uh, <laughs> I can't wait to get this stuff turned into flooring. It's going to be really cool. Yeah.